welcome to this short video. In this video, I want to have a look at orbital resonances in Saturn's rings. What are they and what do they actually look like? Well, if we have a look at Saturn's rings, we'll note that they're not kind of uniform. They're not completely the same all the way through. You've got structure in there. You've got gaps. You've got regions that are brighter, which are likely to do with more material there. They're denser. And there's you know, these gaps or areas where there's a lack of material. And you can actually see some of those with a normal telescope in your back garden, actually. The Cassini division, which is one of the gaps you can actually see with quite a small telescope. And if we zoom in a little bit more, you can see more of that fine scale structure. So it's not evenly distributed. There are areas where there's hardly any ring material. We'd probably call that a gap. And we've got areas which are a lot brighter or well, there's more material there. So what's actually causing them? Well, one reason or one possibility is that you actually have moons inside the rings. Now we did another video where we actually looked at those moons inside the rings, which you can have a look at if you click on the, at the top. So that's one scenario, but you can actually get a gap if you don't have a moon inside the ring. So one scenario actually here is if you have a moon orbiting outside of the ring and you get an orbital resonance. So one example of that, the, probably the best example, is this moon, Mimas. So this particular moon orbits once for every two orbits of a particle in the Cassini division. So you get this kind of mean motion resonance then because the orbital period of a ring particle in the Cassini division and the moon are some ratio of one another. And it just happens to be a two to one ratio, which is a fairly strong resonance. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means that the moon is orbiting once all the way around, and then the ring particle goes twice in the same time period. So it means that they actually pass each other at the same point, the same side of Saturn each time round. So as they pass each other, they exert a gravitational force on one another. The moon is obviously bigger, than a very small particle in the ring. So the orbit of the ring particle is slightly altered. And over time, it means that its orbit is no longer in the location of that Cassini division. So you end up with a void of particles there because they're at that location, they're in a resonance with the moon. And if you remember Kepler's laws, then you'll realize that the closer you get to Saturn here, that the ring is going to be orbiting faster, which is why the ring particle needs to go around twice for one orbit of the moon. And you can work out where these resonances might occur actually, even if you can't see the moon. So if you zoom in a bit closer to the Cassini division, you can quite clearly see where you've got a, an area where there's very little material actually. And this is to do with that two to one mean motion resonance with the moon. And you can see you've got a few more actually there, which are likely to do with other resonances, other moons, and other processes there, but they're pretty much always related to an interaction with a nearby moon, either in the ring or outside the ring. And yeah, pretty much all of Saturn's rings are going to cause some resonant like structure. So here you've got an example, again, zoomed in a little bit closer to the rings. You've got the moon Mimas, you've got Pr Prometheus, you've got Pandora, you've got quite a few there, all causing these resonant like structures. And you can see the numbers there represent the actual ratios of them. And some of them aren't as strong as others. So, you know, 15 to 14 is not as strong as a two to one. And yeah, you've just got a whole variety of different structure there. And they're not all the same. You may notice that some have got a BW and a DW next to them. Well, the BW stands for bending waves. And this is slightly different to the DW, which is the density waves. And this is caused by a, the vertical movement of the moon. So the rings are quite flat and the moons are not on a perfectly aligned orbit. So they're slightly inclined, so they kind of wander around up and down the ring. And that causes this vertical movement of the ring. And it causes a bit like a corrugation of the ring. And it, it occurs at these resonant locations as well. So this is like a vertical distortion in the ring caused by these resonances. The density wave, these spiral density waves are slightly different. So these are essentially spiral density waves that wrap around the ring. They go all the way around multiple times and they kind of wind a little bit tighter. So 
So these are the same, well, the same locations as the mean motion resonances of the moons. And yeah, they just go all the way around. So you can see a nice one there, which is in the B ring of Saturn. You then got another one there, and you can see that actually, as it gets closer or further away from the actual planet, that they get tighter or tightly wound or less tightly wound. But the interesting thing with these spiral density waves is they're very similar to the spiral arms of a galaxy. So if we have a look at a quick simulation of a spiral galaxy, you can see how those spiral arms are formed and the stars are actually moving in and out of those spiral arms. So the spiral arms themselves don't orbit at the same speed as the stars, and it's kind of the same as Saturn's rings. The same kind of physical process happening there. And it's a density wave, so think of it as like traffic on a road. If everyone breaks, the wave can travel in a different direction related to the, to the actual um, cars on the road. So thank you for watching.